Hey guys, uh, right, okay, so this is the first feedback session that I'm going to record. Uh, I'm thinking about doing one painting at a time, so like I'm going to start this video now, it's only going to be for the first painting, for the first feedback, uh, because otherwise it's just going to be way too long. I've got four people that submit their, their artwork, and uh, I want to give them like proper feedback, I don't want it to be super shallow and, and just like as fast as possible, I want it to be actually like quite complete just so they can, um, they can like take the next step um, by understand what they can get better on these paintings. And so the idea is just give kind of like a, a complete feedback. This is not going to be an actual paint over video because otherwise it's just going to take way too long. But I'm going to be showing you guys a few things that I think could get better and uh, just like, uh, uh, ideas in general just so you understand like the fundamentals and a few concepts a bit better and uh, what what to change on these pieces in particular so this one is uh, a painting that was sent to me by Pedro Pedro Piazzarello and this is really cool it's supposed to be a half stone illustration and I think the character is Murloc and uh, I I really like the colors. I think they look really cool. Uh, you have a nice balance between like warms and, and colds there, but we can definitely change it a little bit and also like the values as well. So if I create a new layer on top of everything and name it values and then change the mode to saturation, press OK, then just fill it with black. Uh, if I zoom out, you can understand the values, but this bottom here could be darker because it's merging a bit too much with the mid-ground. So you should have a very clear separation between foreground, mid-ground, and background. The sun, the values that you have for the sun, they're good. Uh, I'm going to talk about the background first before actually like talking about the character. Um, and the values that you have going on the background, like they're okay, they're, they're actually working well. But... If I create a uh, another layer called sketch, just just because. Oh, hang on. Uh, press OK, and I'm gonna get a black value here, just so I can, just so everyone can see. Uh, you have too much of a tangent going on here. So from the lines of the chin, of the jaw, of the character, all the way to the shapes that you have for the like roundness of the sun, they're way, they're following way too precisely so it's like it's creating it's causing those tangents to happen and i understand the idea that you had there like it's a really cool idea that you wanted to put kind of like the sun as if the sun itself was the the character's face kind of like this merging idea but in my opinion uh if i remove this layer and i remove the values layer as well the visibility and make a copy of your painting in my uh opinion it would be better if you brought the sun like so it doesn't intersect with the character even though i understand your idea i feel like it's causing too much of a um it's a bit too like confusing at the moment uh it's like those tangents are too they're happening way too uh, uh strongly if i uh, can say it that way and uh i feel like the top here might be a bit so let me go back to my sketch layer the top here is a bit too empty on those areas so I would bring the Sun I would put it around oh, around here so you can still be centered that's fine but I wouldn't intersect it with the character I wouldn't have that like uh, overlapping of information because it can be quite confusing um, so keep an eye on that uh, okay so talking about the background first without actually uh, worrying too much about the character just yet, I would move the sun, let me make a very quick selection right here, like extremely quick, there you go, something like that, okay, I would bring the sun higher up, let me remove the visibility of the one underneath and let me do that again there you go I would bring the Sun higher up I would make it slightly smaller hold down alt and then it's gonna stay centered 
keep it there and then I would finish the sun whatever you want to do I don't know if it's supposed to have a mouth I'm not sure but I would just like leave it as it is for now uh, also don't forget that the sun is supposed to be a ball of fire so it the lights coming from within the subject itself is not being lit by anything else but that is the actual light source so you have to have some some sort of like shine coming through so you can use linear dodge and just go like in the center there and like add a bit more of shot like this shiny effect it's gonna make it's gonna make it look quite cool okay and then the rays are gonna be somewhere around there I'm not gonna bother too much about getting it to look correct because I don't have too much time but basically like you bring the sun up, it can still be centered, that's fine. Um, but you're going to actually not have the like overlapping of the character and the sun. Because they're kind of like two separate focal points. And I think it's good to have the separation here on the canvas as well. Just so we can understand that uh, like the, the cutout of the character, the silhouette of the character a lot better. It's going to read a lot better when you see it from like a smaller size, like as a thumbnail. So something like this. So if you bring the sun slightly higher up, you will create that really nice effect. Um, so this is talking about the background for now. I'll fix, I'll fix everything on the character later. Don't worry about it just yet. There's going to be something like this. Uh, also, this is way too symmetrical. Break that symmetry a little bit. So if I go ahead and get my uh, liquify tool and then I start to move those rays a little bit, kind of like just trying to break that symmetry because it's just a bit too much. The whole painting is way too symmetrical. Okay. Something more like this. Press OK. This was before. This is after. So just like breaking that symmetry a little bit. Uh, cool. So this is going to make the, the silhouette on the character read a lot better now that the sun's not overlapping with the with the silhouette that you have for Murloc. I think it's Murloc, right? Don't judge me. I don't know anything about Hearthstone. I know everyone wants to paint Hearthstone, so uh, yeah. And I've seen this character before, so I just... I know what the kind of what the character is supposed to look like, but I don't know the name or anything like that. I think it's Murloc. Okay, cool. So something like this. <laughs> the sun's looking quite funny, but it's fine. It's okay. Uh, right. There you go. And then um, on the background, still talking about the background, I I would change these clouds here. So I'd, I would go with the brighter values first, and I would make them rounder and softer. So like just make interesting... Uh, uh, shapes kind of like always think about shapes. I'm gonna go vanish with this bit here because it's way too bright So I'm gonna do kind of like uh, uh, Way too bright. No, sorry way too dark and I want it to be closer to the background It's a bit too far forward at the moment in value and this here as well I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit like that cool um, So these clouds bring them forward a little bit um, like higher up on the canvas Make like layers of clouds so it becomes interesting. You have this space here way too empty. Something like that. And then also soften these edges here on the inside where you change, uh, where you have that change in value because it's way too sharp and it calls a lot of attention and it's not the focal point at all. Like the character is supposed to be the focal point. Also clouds are extremely soft. So make sure you have that like really nice uh, um, softness to it. And add a little bit of movement as well. There's a trick <clears throat> that you can see loads of people doing, loads of artists doing, where they go, let's say, for example, you have an edge here for the cloud. You make a selection of that edge, and then you press filter, blur, motion blur. You choose the direction of the motion that you want to use. Put the distance as well. Press OK, Control D to deselect, and you're going to have like a really nice effect of like, oh, there's movement to it. Which is which there is to clouds because they're they're always moving. So keep that in mind as well. They're a bit too static at the moment. Um, cool. I'm gonna do the same here on this. The same thing here on this side. Don't 
don't do it too much. Like, I don't want to lose that edge completely. I think it's interesting to have that edge, but softer. More like this. And here as well, a little bit. And then the same thing. Also, uh, this negative space here with the sky coming through is not working really well. So I would cover that up and bring the clouds all the way in there. Then keep in mind as well the perspective of the scene for the, the castle that you have on, on the mid-ground as well. To, uh, make sure like it shows the, the angle of the camera. Uh, so I'm going to fix these clouds as well. There you go. Round the shapes. Looks interesting. Something like this. Make those layers of clouds like I said previously. There you go. Something like this. Okay. Right here as well. Because they don't need to be super sharp. They're not the focal point. So just make sure you have nice uh, uh, shapes there going on. Something interesting going on. I'm going to vanish with this remain of the sun here. Something like that. Cool. Um, right. So for the background, I like that you have these darker valleys here for the sky. It creates a really interesting vignette that is kind of like framing the whole image, which is really good. Um, let me make a selection around the whole frame, invert it and clean it up. There you go. Let me zoom out to have a read. Okay, cool. Right. This is okay. Now talking about the character, uh, oh, also, sorry, something else about the sun. Keep in mind that you have to follow the perspective for the sun as well, because right now the sun, look at this, the eyes, they're like just a straight line right in the center of the sun. And they should be affected by the perspective as well. So you should have this angle here because you're seeing it from a lower angle. You're seeing in perspective. So he has to show that. Um, so just to do it very quickly, I will get my liquify tool again. Uh, I'm going to come around here. I'm going to make the brush quite big and I'm going to show that really nice perspective. I don't understand too well what's happening to the eyes either. Like they're just looking a bit odd in my opinion. I don't know why they're kind of like looking in like both directions at the same time. So yeah, just make sure you have that perspective applied to it. Okay. So this is before this is after press. Okay. And I would change the location of the eyes as well. I would bring them more about there or about here. Okay. And about there. Okay. I'm just trying to go as fast as I can, but I want it to be quite complete for the for your feedback. So um if it's too fast, you you let me know in the comments, and then I'll, I'll try to explain something slightly better, if it's the case. Okay, something like this. I don't remember what the eyes were supposed to look like, but just make sure you have, like, a nice kind of, like, direction in which the eyes are, like, staring at, because it was kind of, like, going in both directions first, so I don't, I'm not too sure. It wasn't working very well. So something like this. Let me put this more over here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the sun's supposed to look like, so I'm just going to put a funny face for now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, cool. He's super happy. There you go. So something like this. Um, now you create this, if I change the values, you create this really nice silhouette here for the character. So it's not like merging into the background anymore. But now talking about the character, you can see that the rim lights that you have going on on those arms and the, the uh, nostrils here as well is way too close in value. is pretty much the same value as the background in that specific location. So you're going to have to make it pop. We're going to have to make those brighter. So if I go back from that and I sample the value that I have here, the color, I'm going to go brighter and I'm going to go towards yellows a little bit more. Always remember to change the hue when you, you're doing like shadows or um, uh, um, or like highlights. It has to change. It's, it's not just like by going darker or brighter. You have to change the hue as well, which is extremely important. And loads of beginner artists, they don't do that. Uh, okay. Also, the anatomy here is looking a bit odd. 
because basically you have this massive muscle here on your forearm, which is called the flexor carpi ulnaris, and it's like it's a big bump. And this bump has to be very obvious, but it's not like it's not like what you have going on here. Uh, you have kind of like the elbow here merges into the flexor carpi ulnaris. So I would suggest show the elbow after that connection with the triceps. Once the elbow is done, then you start that bump for the flexor carpi ulnaris. So it's going to look a lot more precise regarding the anatomy, and it goes all the way here to the forearms. Like it's is like is a big muscle and also like is a very soft shape going this way. Also, I'm going to bring some of those warm bounce lights to this section here of the forearm and let me clean the edges up a little bit. So you can see like is one big like curve that follows that zigzagging pattern that you find in like every single uh, body part. You just have like this really nice, let me go back to my sketch layer. You just have this really nice rhythm going on, which is bicep, bicep going down to the elbow into the um, um, flexor carpi ulnaris. And then it goes up, and you have this. Obviously, you do have a little bit of a bump here, but it has that like really nice diagonal to it. And then it goes in and it comes out again, and that's where you see the next curve. So it has this like curve straight, curve straight, curve straight. Is really nice. So follow that shape, yeah. Uh, make sure you take a look at anatomy once you uh, uh, before you actually paint something. So it looks something like this. Uh, I'm gonna make the bicep here slightly darker because it's getting quite a bit of ambient occlusion as well. Just a little bit, and then you have the separation between the flexor carpi ulnaris, and you also have the massive muscle that you have on your forearms, which is the brachioradialis and is a very important muscle to know because it makes it makes like if you know what you're painting uh, 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 if you understand the anatomy of what you're painting everything's just going to look like 10 times better so it's just like minimum things here like small things but they will make a big difference uh, so yeah you can see now the contrast between this arm here and the background compared to this one here, because you lost those values before. So look at that nice glow of the rim light. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here as well on the, at the top here, I'm just gonna go slightly brighter. So I, so I get the really nice rim light, that transition of values. I'm gonna make it softer as well. It's a soft transition because it's a round shape. So keep that in mind, it has to be a soft transition. Uh, the background has to be carved out again because I, I lost it a little bit. Kind of like about there. If it's not perfect now, it's fine. Like I said, it's just for the example. And I, I unfortunately don't have all the time in the world. I'm, uh, I'm recording this on a Sunday because it was the, the only time that I actually uh, uh, found to record this video. But it's fine. Uh, still talking about anatomy as well. Um, you have this... Let me go back to my sketch layer. The latissimus dorsi here, but it's doing a very weird shape. And then suddenly you kind of like try to, I think you're trying to represent still the lats, but it's supposed to be the lats going slightly lower down than that. And then you have the teres major muscle, which is one of the rotator cuff muscles on the back of your scapula. So I would suggest like dialing it down a little bit on the, on the bump here for the, uh, for the lats. Then you're gonna bring this out a tiny bit because it's coming. It is where you have you start to see the obliques and it's uh, obliques and it's it's going in a bit too much. Uh, and then you have the triceps from the back there connecting to the ter uh behind the teres major, and the lats, and it's thicker at the bottom here, like closer to the lats. Then you have the delts. The delts are going way too high up here because of the camera that you have, so it has to be lower, and. The delts, they connect to the biceps here, and the biceps is under the pecs, the, the, the pectoral muscles. So you're going to have this really nice rhythm here, this like S rhythm of the pec muscles going over the biceps and then into the deltoids. Uh, so you need to have that really nice separation there. And always remember the rhythms of the, uh, of the human body. And then you have the biceps here. Uh, you won't be seeing that much of the biceps is going to be higher up 
and then connecting here. Because of the camera, you're going to see a lot more of the triceps is seen from like underneath. And then you're going to have this whole area here with ambient occlusion. But study a little bit more anatomy. It's going to, it's going to help you a lot. There's a really nice book called um, Anatomy in Motion for the Artist, something like that. It's a great, great book. It's really nice. Uh, so keep the anatomy in mind as well. Uh, let me go back to my painting. I mean, to your painting. I am going to be bringing this nostril here, like this muzzle kind of like in a little bit. It's a bit too round for my taste. And the mouth, we're seeing the mouth fully open at the moment. I would recommend bringing the, because we're, the camera is low, you have to follow that perspective. Again, talking about perspective, you would be seeing some of that under jaw. You would be seeing that plane that is under the, um, oh my God, I forgot the name, maxilla, I think. I don't, I don't remember. But under your jaw here, you have this, this really nice plane. So try to show that a little bit more. You're losing the neck here, you're losing that under plane, and you wouldn't be seeing the mouth open that way because the character's not looking down like this. The character's looking up and the camera is low already. So you would see a lot of that and only a little bit of the mouth. So um, I would bring all of this a lot higher up. I would bring this here to show that under uh, plane of the jaw. You can have a little bit of the teeth kind of like poking out at the bottom here, but I'm not sure what the character is supposed to look like, so I'm not going to I'm not going to risk too much on that. And then obviously show all of those plane changes with ambient occlusion. Uh make sure the ambient occlusion in this situation is quite blue, like tinted blue because of the uh you have the skylight which is going to be creating a really nice uh like really nice blue shadows. And also make sure you show the neck here. Like, it's kind of like the character doesn't have a neck at the moment. So something like this. I don't know, what the, like I said, I don't know what the character's supposed to look like. I'm not a massive Hearthstone fan. I don't, I don't know anything about the lore or the characters or anything. So yeah. Um, cool. So something like this is going to go a lot higher up. You can see, like, because of the camera angle, now it's going to show a lot more of that. Um, you can also make this really nice glowy effect here because of the rim light of the sun, supposed to be a very, very bright spotlight. The sun's the brightest light that you can get in any scene. So like, I would go ahead with a very soft round brush, sample this value, go slightly brighter, go towards yellows, and then add a little bit of glow to the outside there, just to create some really nice pop to that image. Um, also, you need a bit more contrast on the inside of that mouth because basically the focal point at the moment is like the darkest part of the character. The teeth are kind of like, they have this like pearly like uh, um, shade to them. Like that, so they, they need to be slightly brighter and don't use white, don't use full white. And the inside of the mouth is gonna get a lot of ambient occlusion because it's a very deep crevice. So there is no light coming through, no light going in there. Uh, so I would suggest sample the value here for the teeth. Go slightly brighter and towards blues. So you're going to move the hue towards blues. Let me get my previous brush again. I'm going to make them slightly brighter. Don't make those cast sh don't make the shadows super sharp because you're not uh, uh, you don't have a direct source of light there. It's only it's only ambient light, so it's going to be quite soft. So something like this. Also show the change in plane on the the lips there. So I'm gonna go slightly brighter and towards greens a little bit. Just show that change in plane and a little bit of the ambient occlusion here as well. Make that softer. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make this inside here, even though it's quite dark already, I'm gonna to have to go nearly full black just to create a bit more contrast at the top here. And then it's going to make that inside of the mouth pop like a bit more. There you go. So this is looking quite cool. And maybe the ambient occlusion that you have going on, on, the, on the, with the connection with the teeth and the gum. Make them slightly darker as well, just a little bit, just to create a bit more interest. But you see that my shadows are getting a bit too sharp now. And there is no direct light in this situation. So I'm going to soften them a little bit with my smudge tool. Something like this. There you go. Here, how long is this video already? 
25 minutes. Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm going to have to speed up things here. I need to, I need to uh, uh, stop soon. Cool. So you create a bit more of that ambient occlusion is going to look quite cool. And also the separation, this super deep crevice in there between the lips and the gun, the gums. So this here is going to be a very, very occluded crevice. Something like that. And then dial it back a little bit because I went, I went overboard a bit too much. Something like this. There you go. This will do. And then soften those edges a little bit as well. Just like that. And bring the edge that you had for the lips back. Just a little bit. Something more like this. Uh, let me see before and after. So this was before. This is after, before, after. I want to do something here. This shape here, I'm not, I don't like it very much. It's way too precise. And I'm not, I'm going to go with liquefy. I'm not too keen on it. I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. Like I said, I don't know what the character is supposed to look like, but I mean, I, I do, but I don't. It's like something that I remember because I've seen the character before. Okay, press okay. This is better. I guess this is better. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not too sure on the character design. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm going to make this bottom here with the uh, burn tool. I'm going to make it slightly dark. I'm going to make a wrong one. I'm going to get like a bigger brush, soft, bigger brush, make this bottom here darker. So I'm framing the character a bit more as well. Don't forget the ambient occlusion on these bits here where the stitching is kind of like gone because it's like ripping off. So you would have a bit of ambient occlusion there as well. And at the moment you have none whatsoever going on. So keep that in mind, something like that. Might be a bit too dark, but that's that's fine. Uh, and then, like, you would have that here as well. This really nice ambient occlusion there because the stitches are kind of, like, like ripping off. Um, what else? Let me see. Uh, the hands, you, you would have to change the anatomy a little bit. I don't have much time now to talk about the hands, unfortunately. I need to go a bit fast. And let me just clear, clean this up a little bit. Cool. So now I can read the valleys like a lot better. And actually, you could even make a selection around the character just to make the rest, just to make the character pop even more. We made it darker already, but I'm going to bring it forward even more by sampling the background value, like value slash color. And I'm going to go very lightly with a big brush right around the edges there that connect with the character and then you make the character pop even more you're going to bring the character forward and don't forget don't forget those really nice rim lights around the whole body of the character uh let me go brighter and less saturated and more towards blues as well and then you're going to have those really nice rim lights following the shape here of the the silhouette of the character and don't make rim light as the line. Don't go full white and then do this. This is my rim light. That's not how it works. You need to follow the shape, the the how it wraps around the form. Always keep that in mind. So you've got to represent all of the bumps, not only by just one line, but how it wraps around the form. Uh, so it would be more like not full white and you would kind of like represent here on the lats and then it goes up. Uh, let me fix the lats as well. There you go. Something more like this. Uh, and then it like you have to understand how the muscles wrap around where the insertion points are and how to actually how would the rim light behave in that situation uh, you would have the rim light like here as well showing the these planes of the of this little um, bracelet thing and then the rest of the biceps here and the connection with the deltoids Something like that. Let me soften those edges a little bit because it got a bit aggressive. And then here as well. Coming this way. And I'm going to paint this as the sky. There you go. Something like this. Cool. Let me see. Before and after. Before. After. Before. After. 
yeah, there you go. So this is it for now. Uh, I, I have all the things that I would change, for example, like the shield on the left side. Uh, still a few things about the background. Uh, the camera angle is a bit off, like with the perspective of the castle, but we don't have much time at the moment. So these are the main bits that you should change at the moment, like at this point of the painting. And then send it again to me and I'll give you a few more pointers because this video is already half an hour long. And uh, yeah, we went over like loads of stuff. So hopefully that was really helpful to you, Pedro. Uh, thank you so much for your submission. Uh, I hope this really helps. And like I said, let me know. Let me know how it goes. And if you have any other problems like trying to fix the painting, um, just just send it again to me and then I'll give you more uh, a bit more feedback. But study a bit more of anatomy, uh, a bit more anatomy as well. It's extremely important to know what muscles will look like from a specific angle. You need to know those things in order to be a concept artist or like a game artist or a splash artist, even even more if you're a splash artist. Also, just before I go, I want to go ahead and just bring my saturation up a little bit because I lost some of that saturation. Okay, and then zoom out, bring my color balance as well, and shadows, I want to send them towards blues a little bit. Not too much. Let me see. Okay, and then mid-tones, redder. Nice, nice, really cool contrast. Okay. Even a bit of purple, maybe just a tiny bit to try and get like something interesting of those colors. Always try, be, take risks, like try something crazy when you're painting, like see if it doesn't work, you just go back. That's it. Because the painting before the adjustments was way too green and yellow, way too much. So look at that, changing, now adding some purple, some blues, some nice uh, uh, warms to that as well. And if I go back to highlights, then I can bring them towards like more yellowish, uh, uh, yellowish, red-ish, orange-ish colors. So something like this, press OK, zoom out, and you can see how much it pops now, like it's looking pretty cool. This is just a sketch, but you get the gist, like you get the idea. So like I said, I hope this was really helpful. This is uh, the changes that I did. So this is what it looks like after, this is before, this is after. Let me zoom out to see it at a, uh, as like a thumbnail. So before and after, before and after. Cool. So I hope that helped. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.